Part three of the C1 Advanced Reading and Use of English paper is word formation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> word formation. formation. So then, what is word formation? Is it difficult? What is the best strategy? Are we going to die? <coughs> Let's find out. My name is Toby, this is Smash English, and here is everything that you need to know about part three of the Reading and Use of English paper for the C1 Advanced Cambridge exam. So firstly, what is word formation? Well, you will be given a text with eight spaces. For each space, you will be given a stem word, and it is your job to transform this stem word so that it goes into the space. Mm. This may sound confusing, and don't worry, because I'm going to give you lots of examples. But before I do, here are some things that I would like you to think about. Number one, you should be asking yourself, what type of word is the stem word? Is it a noun, an adjective, a verb, or an adverb? Number two, from our sentence, what type of word do you think we need to make? Do we need to transform our stem word into a verb, a noun, an adjective, or an adverb? Eh. Number three, what is the meaning? We need to make sure that the word that we make makes sense in the sentence. This means that we might need a plural noun, or we might need to add a positive or negative prefix to an adjective, for example. Let's have a look at a really simple example, but I promise you, in the exam, it will be a lot more difficult than this. This is just to show you the type of exercise that we're talking about here. <laughs> Unfortunately, time travel is still an... Our stem word here is possible. We need to change the word possible so that it fits in the space. Our stem word, possible, is an adjective. We have the indefinite article an before our space, and our space is the last word in the sentence. So this suggests that we need to make a noun. We can make two possible nouns from the adjective possible. Possibility, or we can add the negative prefix im to create impossibility. Well, time travel is not possible, so possibility isn't possible. And secondly, we have the indefinite article an, not a. So our answer must be impossibility. See? That wasn't difficult, was it? No, that was easy. But it was a really easy example, so don't be too proud of yourself. Uh, let's look at an entire text together. <sighs> All right. Oh, good God, what have you been doing? Uh, I've been doing research, Toby, for the video. Huh? I've been researching British pubs for the exercise, Toby. Uh, look. Oh. Why is it wet? Oh, shut up, stop complaining. Give it back. I, I want to read it. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> read the text below. Use the word GIVEN in capitals to form one word in each gap. The British pub is one of the most renowned of British institutions. But not every British pub is the same. Some are young, hip and with music bellowing from a modern sound system. Others are less. A quiet respite from the hustle and bustle of modern city life. Often it is thought that pubs are solely a place to drink, but this is a common ranging from the cheap and to the sophisticated and refined. A pub is out there for all budgets and culinary tastes. But of course, one thing that unites them all is alcohol. Indeed, a pub would surely not deserve the name if it did not serve beverages. Pints of ale are pulled and served at room temperature. But that does not mean you can't find a of wines, spirits, cocktails and even soft drinks. So, let's try and answer some of these questions. The British pub is one of the most renowned of British institutions. Our stem word doubt can be a verb or a noun. For example, you could be right, but I doubt it. That's a verb. Or, I want to believe you, but I have my doubts. Now, doubt is a noun. 
Can you think of any word or phrase with doubt that we could put in this space? This might help us understand the meaning. We could say, without a doubt. And this is a fixed expression that means something is certainly true. Now, of course, we cannot write without a doubt in this space, because we need to transform the word doubt. We can only use one word. However, we've identified the meaning, and this is an important step. So then, we need an adverb that modifies the verb is and means the same thing as without a doubt. The adverb we need is undoubtedly. Please remember that suffixes and prefixes follow very little logic, so you can talk about something being undoubtedly true, but you cannot describe something as doubtedly true, because doubtedly doesn't exist. Yeah, Toby, I only included this one because it's so difficult, yeah? Undoubtedly, only the most intelligent of students will have got this one right. Yeah, great. Um, w well done, Bruce. Let's move on. Some are young, hip, and with music bellowing from a modern sound system. What type of word is our stem word? Well, live can be a verb and an adjective. Be careful with the pronunciation here, though, because if live is an adjective, we pronounce it live. For example, you could go to see a live band, you could listen to live music, you could watch a live TV show, or you could see real live animals at the zoo. Hoo hoo hoo! Great! And of course, we pronounce the verb to live, live. For example, you could live your dreams, you could live in denial, you could live your life to the full, or you could live a lie. Oh no! So then, what type of word do we need in the space? Well, we have a list. Young, hip, and. Young and hip are adjectives, so this suggests that the word we need is an adjective. Could we just put the adjective live here? Well, no, because a live pub, that makes no sense. Those words are not collocated. What about the adjective alive? For example, a city can be alive, a place can come alive, a lover can make you feel alive, but a pub, can a pub be alive? Not really, no. We could say lifeless. If a place is lifeless, it means it's dull and boring, but that doesn't really make sense with the meaning, because this pub is young and hip. So then, it sounds like we need the opposite of lifeless, which is lifeful. What? No! Just because an adjective ends with the suffix less does not mean that its opposite finishes with the suffix full. <laughs> Remember that. Oh, I bloody hell, don't go on about it, Jesus. The opposite of lifeless is lively, and that's the word that we need. Remember, you can also have a lively debate or a lively discussion. If you're really keen on something, you may have a lively interest in it. For example, you guys have a lively interest in English learning, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video now, would you? <laughs> no. Others are less a quiet respite from the hustle and bustle of modern city life. This one is easier, as there are fewer options. We have the verb to be and the comparative less. Glamour is a noun. We need to transform the noun glamour into its adjective. Only one adjective is possible from glamour, and that is glamorous. So that's our answer. However, can you make any other words from the stem glamour? What about the verb to glamorize, which means to make something glamorous? For example, I don't like the way modern music glamorizes drug use, for instance. You can also add a bit of glamour to something, or add a touch of glamour to something. For example, I'll add a touch of glamour to smash English. There are many words I can think of to describe you, but uh, glamorous? Nah, that's, uh, that's not one of them. <coughs> Often it is thought that pubs are solely a place to drink, but this is a... Let us start with the meaning here. Is it true that you can only drink in pubs? Well, no, because this entire paragraph is talking about the food served in pubs. So, we need a word that means wrong idea. We know that we need a noun because we have the indefinite article, a. Our stem word is concept, and concept is a noun. 
Concept can mean idea. And we can talk about a common concept, but we know that concept is not the word that we need, because common concept does not have its equivalent negative form. Ah. So, we need to take the noun concept, transform it into another noun that has a negative form, and this negative form needs to collocate with the adjective common. Ah. This requires transforming the noun concept into conception, and then adding the negative prefix mis. So our word here is misconception. So that's our answer, misconception. A misconception is a falsely held belief or idea. Oh, sorry about that, everyone. Right, Bruce, no, you've drunk too much. Go to bed, go away. Uh, Toby, that is actually a common misconception. If I am still capable of movement, then I am not drunk enough. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, sure. Ranging from the cheap and to the sophisticated and refined, a pub is out there for all budgets and culinary tastes. Let us try not to analyse this one too much, because the expression is a common collocation. If something is cheap and cheerful, it means it's cheap. Hey Toby, how was your holiday? It was alright. Where did you stay? Nowhere special, we kept things cheap and cheerful. <laughs> Great. Indeed, a pub would surely not deserve the name if it did not serve beverages. So, we need an adjective to describe the word beverages that comes from the stem alcohol. We have two options here. We could say alcoholic, or we could say non-alcoholic. And of course, we are talking about pubs, so the answer is alcoholic, and that means containing alcohol. Remember that this word can also be a noun. Someone is an alcoholic if they are addicted to alcohol. Mm. What? Nothing. Good! <laughs> Pints of ale are pulled and served at room temperature. Notice here that our word is at the beginning of the sentence, and it is separated from pints by a comma. Now, this means that we need an adverb to modify the sentence, and not an adjective to modify pints. This is a really important point, as if you don't notice this, you might take the word tradition and create the adjective traditional to describe pints, and then you would be wrong. Ah. So, we'll take our noun, tradition, we will transform that into the adjective, traditional, we will then transform the adjective, traditional, into the adverb, traditionally, and there we have our answer. Traditionally. <laughs> Great. But that does not mean you can't find a... of wines, spirits and cocktails, and even soft drinks. Okay, this one is difficult, and maybe you know the answer immediately, but do you know why you know the answer? Probably not, so let's have a look. Very is a verb, and in this space we need a noun. The two obvious choices we have are variation and variety, but which one do we need? Well, rather than try to give you a complicated definition for each one that wouldn't make much sense anyway, uh, let's have a look at a bunch of sentences with both variety and variation, and from there, see what makes the most sense. Boy, oh boy, <laughs> this sounds like a lot of fun, right? <laughs> this recipe is a variation of a dish I had while traveling. Here, the meaning of variation is similar to modification. The recipe is similar, but distinct. All of the songs are variations on the same theme. A homage to love and loss through the eyes of a 13th century peasant. Here, all the songs share the same theme, but they are presented in a different way. Emphasis on differences between the sexes fails to take into account the variation within them. Here, variation means difference, but again is only appropriate if we are talking about the differences between things that are mostly similar. I decided to learn English for a variety of reasons, not least of which being my love of Toby. Here, variety means range. 
Variety is collocated strongly with reasons. Students are offered a wide variety of extracurricular activities, including cricket, amateur dramatics and yoga. Here, variety means range again. Variety is strongly collocated with the adjective wide. I never want to settle in one place. After all, variety is the spice of life. Variety is the spice of life is an idiom. It means new and exciting experiences make life more interesting. Looking at the examples then, which word do you think makes the most sense? Well, variety, here meaning range. And there we go. We've done them all! <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> and with that, we are finished. That was how to do part three of the C1 Advanced Reading and Use of English paper, the Word Formations. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below. My name is Toby and this was Smash English.